Can we please calm our minds, please? If we can switch all the background noise off because we will be putting these recordings at some point onto the internet. So if we can keep absolutely quiet, that would be amazing. <coughs> Last week we had a very a heavy topic that we discussed about the third eye. And the soul dimensions and the cons. I think there was some people who wanted to reach out and needed more clarification. I did try contacting back, but unfortunately I could not get through because the way they had set, the, uh, they had set up their uh, messenger. So if you wish for me to clarify any aspect or any other aspect of spirituality, then please make sure that uh, the connection can be two ways. Today, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about attitude. The importance of attitude. Especially in our spiritual progress. Every religion in the world first teaches you to define your attitude. If you take a piece of rock and you give it to somebody who will Sculpt that rock, make a shape. Eventually you will get an absolutely amazing piece from the same rock. Similarly, whatever religion you belong to, people argue over religions. I have seen people argue over religions. God does not need for us to tell everybody how wonderful he is or how great he is. He does not need that. This is a very personal journey. And indeed for those people who follow this path, the first thing that disappears is the need for arguing with any. That disappears. There is no need. That's the first stage Nago beri nehi begana. I no longer have enemies. No one is foreign to me anymore. Sagala sanga hamko ban ai. Everyone from all four corners of this world, they are mine and I am theirs. If that mindset does not develop, if that attitude has not developed, then you have wasted a lot of life pursuing spirituality. So, Tithe Kadiye Sorta Mata Mana Buddha. That's a teaching. Define. Sculpt this mind, how? Let the Guru, let Jesus, let Allah, let Shiva, let Brahma 
submit to them, submit to their teachings. Go in as a lump of clay and come out as a beautiful article. Article with value. In life, we complain many times about the attitude of people and how they affect the peace inside us. Complain, complain, complain. We have the ability to be so positive, strong, beautiful, divine, loving, and yet we tend to be dictated by the wrong attitudes. Our attitude creates no end of problems in our lives with our loved ones, at work, in our social structure. And we have attitude issues with people's beliefs. My belief is better than yours. My God is better than yours. My way is better than yours. Arguing over that in the religious affair. We have an attitude issue with the color of people's skin, their race, their religion. Every aspect of our attitude, negative attitude, the list is endless. So the first step in spirituality is to start desperately to evaluate our own attitudes. because there are many ways in which our spiritual progress will be hindered if we do not take the first step. Koho nanak ben apa jine mite na bharm ki kai without self-reflection. The maya <coughs> will be prevalent in our thoughts. To live in love with the diverse nature of creation was our divine nature. There is no Hindu, there is no Muslim, there is no Sikh, there is no Christian. We are all one. That is our ways. Rise above all that. We are one. And yet influenced by the forces of Maya, our divine attributes have been shaped by unpleasant attitudes. Those which will not be pleasing to the divine. If we are not aware of our own attitudes, they will wear us down and will have a significant effect within our family structure, social structure, work, and for sure in our spiritual relationship with the divine. The first thing you have to drop in the world of spirituality is your attitude. This is why when we do this to our holy text, we are throwing our mind away. We are saying to the divine, this mind is the reason why we are in pain, my love. I reject this mind. I empty this mind. Please give me your mind. That is the reason. All teachings of all religions will teach us that the first step towards the Divine Father starts from our attitude. Our attitude can and will destroy everything we hold dear in our lives. And yet the sad thing is that we were born happy. As children, we were happy. 
And in fact, we had to be slapped by our parents for us to cry. And yet as we grew, we lost that smile. We lost that happiness. And somewhere along the line, our divinity has been stolen by Maya. And now we have forgot how to smile. And now somebody has to slap us to make us smile and say, wake up. You have a beautiful life, wake up. We take so many things for granted. Somewhere along the line, we forgot that we were the children of the divine. And the challenge is we need to find the divine beauty that we all have within us. Some people will say, well, it will happen when it will happen. No, it will not happen when it will happen. We cannot wait for things to change. We need to accept that we have lost something and that there is a better life that we can enjoy and bring joy into the lives of many others. However, we will need to fight. <clears throat> we will need to become spiritual warriors. By using the tools of humbleness, meditation, sangat, these are our weapons. We cannot allow Maya to shape our attitudes. We cannot allow others, our so-called friends, who have no spiritual understanding to shape our attitude and steal from us all the promises of the divine. Divine said, if you live with me in your heart, I will give you the whole universe. But we cannot access that promise. We were born from love, compassion, forgiveness. And yet for the many, and even in religious circles, especially has been replaced by hatred, bitterness, anger, arrogance, professional jealousy. So we have to pay very close attention to our minds and the way we think and the Sangha to the company that we keep. We have to make sure that we stay rooted in the love of the divine to our scriptures. Stop the blame game. They did this and this is why I said this and this is a reason and this is the reason and this is the reason. Don't. That is Maya. There is no reason because you are divine. You only know one way of living. Not two, not three and not four. <clears throat> when you are attached to your spiritual text and through the blessings of the divine souls we will start to build those attitudes which will break all the old bad records playing in our subconscious mind they did this and they said this and they did this and by God I have known people who have carried hatred and bitterness for 30, 40 years of their lives. And the moment they see that person, the record starts playing, the emotions kick in and attitudes rear their ugly head. No, 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 this is not the way of a spiritualist. This is not your way. That is the ego. But this change will not be easy we have been conditioned over many lives 
understand one thing please that true change of attitude will only be born once we connect with our heart through the so true source of divine values so whether you draw your inspiration from allah guru brahma shiva buddha wherever you draw your inspiration please connect now there is a tried and tested method which the scriptures share and that is first connect with your spiritual text first whether it's the quran whether it's the guru granth sahib ji whether it's the vedas whether it's the bhagavad gita whether it's the holy bible connect with the spiritual text then find a true spiritual master who understands that text because there is a hidden language in that text ए अखर मिट जाएंगे ओ अखर इन में ना है दिस स्पिरिचुअल टेक्स्ट विल गो इन टाइम ऑल रिटन स्पिरिचुअल टेक्स्ट इन टाइम विल गो हाउ एवर द लैंग्वेज विद इन दैट लैंग्वेज विल वाइब्रेट डीप डाउन हियर इन योर सोल find that master who has risen and understood the secret language find those masters who carry no desire for self recognition they have no desire for your financial gain they are not dependent upon you they are only dependent upon the divine for they will encourage you to connect to the spirit of your religious text no arguments your religious text connect with those individuals who have divine peace in their hearts please who have divine love in their hearts for they will teach you how to live and serve all of the united and universal family of one then the third stage is to start socializing with those spiritual people who have the same purpose in life the biggest problem in spirituality is that we are trying to keep a balance between the world and the spirit world it's not going to happen something will give that is sangat you have to make that choice if you want your child to achieve education the easiest thing is to make sure that the company that they're surrounded with have the same purpose in life it is no good putting them in friendship with those who are going to bunk school take drugs and then you ch- expect your child to be a doctor it's not, simply not going to happen so select your friends very important and take a distance from those who will lead you towards the destructive pattern of thoughts once you have these three parameters in place then reflect on the advice given by such beautiful souls not any human interpretation please the biggest problem we have in spirituality especially is all human interpretation and human interpretation is going to come from the maya so those who carry divine love who understand the language within the language spend time with them and you will see that they're all the same whichever religion they may represent these beautiful souls will teach you 
how to strip yourself of your selfish attitudes, your corrupted way of thinking that is influenced by Maya. They will help us, guide us and bless us, which is very important. To let go of our previous way of living. They will help remove the delusions of our minds, which are our biggest, biggest obstacles. They will begin to help us to develop a new way of thinking. And in time, our spiritually dead soul will begin to fire up. As we begin to understand, as we, they begin to share their love with us, we will start to be renewed. In their society, we will begin to start building good karma, reinforcing our connection to the Shabd, the Word, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, Shiva, Brahma, Vahigur. And through the power of the Sangat, meaning congregation, and the Shabd, meaning the name of your Prophet, you will begin to regenerate. Your focus will become laser sharp. Your attitudes will become laser sharp. And in their Sangat, your bad attitudes will simply begin to burn. It takes time, but it happens. These attitudes have been formed by many, many lives of exposures. They will not disappear without a fight. We are so conditioned if you are used to sleeping on the left hand side of the bed, try changing and sleeping on the right hand side of the bed. <laughs> that is how conditioned we are. So these attitudes have really conditioned us. But in their society, by the power, by the grace of the divine, your bad attitudes will begin to burn into a heap of dust back into nothingness where they came from. And these divine souls will help maintain your positive spiritual attitude. Understand one thing, please, that if you fall off a spiritual or a social ladder, it is very difficult to climb back up. So in their company, they will make sure that you do not fall of the spiritual ladder. Providing we listen and bring into our lives their teachings. Many people go to satsang, temples, masjids. It's a tick box exercise. I have to go on a Friday to the masjid. I have to go to Sunday on the Gurdwara. I have to, I have to go to Sunday to the church. No, no, that's not the way. This has to go. This has to go this has to go. The mind has to go, the Guru has to come in, Allah has to come in, Jesus has to come in, Shiva has to come in, Brahma has to come in, and then the heart has to be present. They will teach you that maintaining is better than trying to regain. For once you lose your spiritual path, it's very, very difficult to come back up, especially when you have age against you and health against you. So maintain and not regain is the mantra, the battle of retaining our spiritual attitude will be far easier than trying to regain what we lose. However difficult that may be, we must remain spiritually vigilant. An aeroplane that stays connected to the flight plan as set out by base control, the tower will reach its destination. Whatever the circumstance, however much the wind turbulence, it will be guided 
Similarly, the control tower of our mind has to stay connected with the Holy Quran, the Holy Bible, the Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Bhagavad Gita, in the words of the Divine, in the Sangat, with the spiritual master and Shat. for they will guide our mind back to where it came from. They will make sure that the radar, the focus, the attitude stays absolutely sharp. Understand one thing, whichever language and from whichever divine fountain of spiritual nectar we drink, whether that's Allahu, 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 Wah Guru, Wah Guru, Jesus, Jesus, Om, Om. The shape of that fountain may be different, but believe me, the taste of the nectar is exactly the same. Don't argue over the shapes. Just enjoy the taste, enjoy the nectar. Once you have a preordained genuine spiritual master, you will have a friend for life, not just in this life, but in the next life as well. And they will be with you wherever your soul goes. For that is the only attitude they live by. A friend when needed, a shoulder to cry on when needed, a place of rest for a tired soul, weary of the rejections and the pains of expectations. A true master understands that the soul does not only live for the divine, but also lives in the divine. Not just for, but in. Therefore, the only attitude a true spiritualist lives for is always to please the divine. And this is the only attitude they will share with their disciples. How? First submission. With your own mind. to a higher authority. My divine, I am nothing without you. This mind is polluted. Please guide me. This reflects honor and respect for your prophet, for the word of your prophet. This will tackle self-pride just by respect. Second stage, humility. Stay humble to those teachings. Whatever spiritual position you are blessed with, remain humble. For when the biggest tornadoes come, the tallest buildings, the highest trees, they all go. It's this tiny ant that remains safe. So stay humble. Then trust. You believe in Jesus? Please. 100% trust, not 99% trust. You believe in Allah? 100% trust. Wherever your beliefs are, 100% trust in the word of the Prophet. And then self control. These are the stages. Be watchful and vigilant from the illusions of Maya. Because I will tell you one thing, Maya will come this way and Maya will come that way. Sometimes Maya will work through those people who you think are the closest to you. Maya is a very, very tricky customer. And these are the building blocks of a beautiful, focused attitude for a successful spiritual life. Simply put, 
Spirituality is an attitude for living, for loving, for caring, for accepting. The divine has given us all a beautiful space on this beautiful earth of his. We need to give everybody space in our hearts in the same way. It was a warm morning. The days were getting warmer by the moment. The Indian summer had kicked in. Baba Nanakji was standing outside us, looking at his home. He was surrounded by his two sons and some Sangat and his disciple Lehna. Guruji was observing a brick wall in front of his home. He looked at one of his children and said, Sri Chand, can you tear this wall down and rebuild it? For it looks weak. Sri Chand, his son, looks at the wall and replies, Father, the wall looks fine to me. It's perfectly fine, Father. Guruji went quiet. <clears throat> After a small time, he looked at his second son, Lakshmi Das. Can you replace this wall, tear it down, and rebuild a sturdier wall, my son? And his second son also refused citing the same sentiments. Standing behind Guruji was Lehna. Lehna was Guruji's disciple. <coughs> Lehna, this wall needs rebuilding. And even before the request was made, Lehna went to fetch some tools and started to tear the wall down brick by brick. When the wall was torn down and rebuilt, Guruji looked at Lena, looked at the wall and said, pull that wall down and rebuild it again. Without hesitation, Lena started to tear the wall and rebuild the wall again. Again, Guruji looks at the wall and the midsummer heat was absolutely intense. Lena was sweating. No drink, nothing. Guruji says, Lena, I want you to tear this wall and start rebuilding it again. And in the stifling Indian summer heat, Lena stripped that wall down and started rebuilding. And the two children of Guruji started getting agitated at what they were seeing. And they could no longer hold their emotions. Stop this madness immediately, Lena. Can you not see that our father is getting old? Lena carried on. And Guruji was simply observing. For Guruji, it was not about building a wall. This was about building an attitude, not a wall, an attitude, an attitude of patience, which is so, so, so needed in the world of spirituality, an attitude of humbleness. However, the vision and the attitudes of the others were simply under the influence of a Maya mind. They were thinking like this. Lena, he was thinking from here. Lena was simply influenced by the desire to please his master. No questions asked. As the sun set, Guruji asked Lena to stop. Looked at the wall, looked at Lena, smiled at him, and gave him a huge hug and a blessing. This is the attitude, the key to a spiritual awakening. 
not only to live for the in the divine but to live for the divine to live with this attitude is to live in faith in love in compassion in humbleness in harmony in humility in empathy in kindness to live detached from the voices of the maya world here to live in the world where only you and your divine lover exists you are not there to please anybody else and to live whatever the circumstances with a very sublime beautiful attitude and if we can learn to live like this we will enter the realms of the divine such kind khima gahi sach sanjyo khayo yam ratna adopting an attitude of tolerance the scriptures say we will start gathering the truth we will start bathing in the ambrosial nectar of the shat lehna became angad that was the blessing angad means a limb guruji looked at lehna toiling away and became so happy he said lehna you are now part of my limb you are no longer different i live in you you live in me just by pleasing the divine he became the heart of the guru and later on he took on the spiritual seat of gurunath simply by an attitude of seva meaning service to the divine where his divine lover was without question when you go to make a record and you go into a recording studio every note every tone every syllabus is recorded on a record and you bring this record back home and you play this record what is recorded on that record is the only thing that will play back nothing else similarly our attitudes are the reflections of what we hear say experience eat and drink all this will have a profound impact on our minds affecting our thoughts consequently affecting our attitudes and what is etched in the record of this mind will be played out through our attitudes so always carry an attitude of pleasing the divine by meditating by respecting everybody 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 is a mine i am everybody have all respect complete respect for all the scriptures please respect respect if we are not prepared to change our attitude then we must be prepared to live a life of misery anger frustration and judgments only when the word of the divine is rooted in our hearts will the dry empty heart fill up in love and become green and lush again how many years have passed by anger resentment frustrations and making excuses no today make a decision today make that decisive choice that i no longer decide to live by my old habits i wish to be recreated by my scriptures let's stop deceiving the divine and start to love all his creation you can map this whole world But yeah this one aspect of this world which is very difficult to map that's the landscape of a desert that cannot be mapped out accurately 
because of the changing nature of the drifting sands. The desert will expose something today and hide it by the evening. In an instant. How many secrets of lost times and hidden empires in the descent of time? We are like a desert. And the winds of Maya is pushing us around in our thoughts, our desert sense of thought are just drifting and one minute we're holy, the next minute we're angry, the next minute we're frustrated, the next minute we're this and the next hiding, exposing, hiding, exposing, hiding. Consistently drifting in the drift of Maya. That way we simply cannot understand who we are. We will never understand our emotions and in this way, our attitudes will keep changing. A good spiritual teacher will be there for you, stand by you, and take you to the end of your spiritual journey. And one attitude, do not fight over religions, the names of gods, just love, and respect and start living for and in the teachings of the divine. I have one vision. You know what my vision is? I see, I see a dark sky. And you know what I see you people as? The shining stars in that dark sky. That is what I see of all of you. Shining stars whichever religion you belong to. You are stars. If you genuinely, genuinely want to make a change in this world, get out of your comfort zone. I can say one thing to you. If you have enough people, I will fly over and teach. The purpose of my life is simply to serve. But at my age, with my health conditions, my time is limited, my health is limited. Go and start this revolution wherever you are. Christians reaching out to Muslims, Muslims reaching out to Sikhs, Sikhs reaching out to Hindus, Hindus reaching out to Buddhists. Do that. What a beautiful world we can build. But we must rise above, I want to be acknowledged, no. <laughs> then nothing will happen. Have a vision, have that vision, which you can come back in the next life and the life beyond and the life beyond, and you carry on. Don't limit yourself. I am here to the best of my ability, but I cannot do this on my own. You are my hands and my feet and my energy. Share, spread, create, change, and leave a better world for our children. Leave a better world for everyone. This world was made for good people, but good people have gone quiet and negative energy has spread. Sagli tarti sadhaki taskar this was made for good divine spiritual souls. Get up and become a spiritual warrior. But first, fight yourself. Raise your standard. People do not change because of good language and good talking. You have to adopt these values deep inside you. There are many people that are very good at talking and writing. This is not that path. Do not get influenced by talk. Look at somebody's character, look at somebody's character and take it from there. Become the teaching. If you're a Muslim, become a true Muslim. If you're a Christian, become a true Christian. If you're a Hindu, become a true Hindu. If you're a Sikh, become a true Sikh. Whoever you are, become true because there is only one truth. Only one truth. And in this way, we can all be bound down together. My master used to say, Bahadur, have you ever seen a wheel when it turns around? Can you see all the spokes? But yet smack in the middle there is just this one center, which he used to call Tura. And he goes, look, 
how beautiful this wheel is because it's all connected to this one center. This is how we should be connected with the one center. And just watch how we can evolve. Just watch how this beauty can evolve. These spiritual fighters change that world. Leave an impact. We are all going to leave this world, but what you leave behind is what is going to go with you. God bless you all. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Bahadur Bhaji. Pray for me, please, that I can do the best of my ability to serve you as your humble servant.